we're, we're picking up in the alternate universe. And the big question, of course, is what's going to happen to Olivia? Because the last time that you see her, she's in a cell. And, uh, and she's crying and she wants to get out. And, and they hit the ground running, which I, I love how they do that. They end with the big episode and they start with the big episode. And then they, they build up the momentum again. And, and, you know, they're not disappointing this time at all either. It's really a fantastic episode. It's really dynamic. The way that, um, I was just telling Lance, the way that in season two, when Olivia flies out of the, the car window, like it's, it kind of blows your mind and you don't expect it. There, there's a lot of that in the first episode of season three. Yeah. For Astrid, for Boreal, We've seen your alt selves as well, a little more militant, slightly different. How much more are we going to dig into their lives in this season? Well, um, I, I can't tell you that you're going to see, you know, on, in the alternate universe, Broyles is still married, and you're going to see uh, more of his personal life. You're going to see his wife again, which I'm happy about. Mm. I don't want to say too much, but yeah, that, that becomes actually a, a pretty big plot point. And what about for Astrid? She's a little more militant and a little more like... Yeah, she, she, um, she has Asperger's. She's a super high-functioning autistic, and uh, FBI headquarters is a perfect place for her. And I think this is interesting because I'm sure that uh, the Astor that has already been established that we're familiar with is super smart with numbers too. You know, she's 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 a brilliant girl, but she uh, she's very personable, and that's why she was brought to the fringe team so that she could work with Walter and help him when he needed help. And this Astrid, or the alternate Astrid rather, she doesn't she doesn't have that same skill set. She has some Walter-like quality. Well, she really does, which is totally what we were talking about before. And if they ever cross paths, I am very excited to see what that's going to be. Like, how much crossover do you think there's going to be back and forth? Well, first of all, they got to solve the problem of, you know, people <laughs> going back and forth too much and then they explode. Yeah, there's, but, that's uh, kind of an issue. Olivia is the only person who can do it without hurting herself. Yeah. But also, I, I think that... Um, Unlike Olivia, it would be hard for Broyles to go undercover as the other Broyles, uh, just because they speak differently. I want you to go over See, to the other side. Astrid could, play, could, uh, could go undercover as the other Astrid. Mm -hmm. The other one couldn't do this. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, 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 not yeah. vice versa. That would be, nah, that's a right? good idea. Isn't that interesting? Because yeah, I yeah. have definitely thought about that. And yeah. I am, I'm very curious to know, you know, we only, we've only seen uh, Olivia see her doppelganger in in the moment for the first time and that that was really amazing to see them both see each other yeah it was incredible but we haven't seen anyone else do that so I'm curious to know what happens when when Colonel Broyles meets Special Agent Broyles or what what happens like what's the first thought that you have when you see yourself in front of you you know it, I mean and it's not even like oh I have a long lost twin I mean this is someone from another universe right. and whose turf are you going to be on like that's gonna set the footing off differently too but what I really want to know is uh, who is going to find out that we have the wrong Olivia first